Okay, so last week AMD released a new driver for its Radeon graphics cards. And, um, well, there was a, a surprise and particularly unwelcome announcement where essentially um, AMD was going to be partitioning um, its its uh, driver updates from now on. RDNA 1 and 2 would receive would go into quote-unquote maintenance mode and uh, would receive, um, well, uh, fewer updates. Basically, no new features was kind of like what was hinted. And there was also this very strong suggestion that you wouldn't be getting day one optimization for new titles. Um, And then there would be the uh, branch for um, RDNA 3 and 4, and presumably future GPUs, which would get all of the good stuff. Obviously, this caused a lot of problems for a lot of people because of the proliferation of RDNA 2 devices, and specifically that AMD continues to actually sell them. Um, uh, The most recent one that comes to mind being the um, uh, Xbox Ally, uh, the non-X version, which is essentially using the Steam Deck APU tweaked RDNA 2 graphics. What would have happened there? Um, This was... We actually recorded a segment for DF Direct last week where we sort of were essentially condemning the decision because it really was not great. Uh, We removed that section because AMD swiftly (laughs) did a reverse ferret and basically said, well, actually, you're confused. We we never actually said that. What we do mean is that you're going to continue to get... uh, uh, day one support for RDNA 2. RDNA, you'll still get a great experience with RDNA graphics cards. Um, so there's just been now a number of clarifications, and um, uh, Steve at Game is Nexus. He's happy. He's uh, his video was superb. It was a, is, it was how really fun. Actually, happy. Uh, Steve's, a, Steve's a nice guy, but that video made me laugh a lot of times. Oh, it was um, very funny because yep. you know it was essentially a point by point tracking of the timeline, and basically AMD suggesting that it was uh, uh, that, that we were confused without actually acknowledging that. Whoa, hold on a minute, it's you guys that caused the confusion you know with 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 statements that are entirely contradictory to one another supplied to different outlets um but we we yeah at the time we weren't aware of you know we thought it was just a, a simple reverse ferret so to speak and uh, that is uh why we removed it but we're talking about it this week because things are sort of starting to come into focus now um alex what do you think about this well, I mean, we did supply some questions to AMD um, because <laughs> yes. we because our not confusion reigned. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. I mean, we asked about stuff that they probably don't want to talk about. Hence, why the, the we didn't get some uh, questions. We asked about, for example, um, well, the, the thing is, they in their initial announcement as well as in clarifying announcements thereafter, they make reference to the difference between getting game optimization day one support, kind of, and uh, feature support. And so we took feature support to mean things like Redstone, FSR 4. Um, I also took it to mean uh, DirectX uh, shader model updates, which is actually a key thing. Developers rely on shader model updates to DirectX um, to ship with their games. Uh, so that you, they can adv- use new coding functions and stuff like that uh, and have a better running game. For example, if there's a console port that uses more low-level things, DirectX shader model updates can allow the PC GPUs to take advantage of similar things they do on consoles to make a better running port, right? Um, and those are all things that I, that we asked about. And the, the answers we got back, uh, there was none, there was no answer, really good answer brought to us about whether or not something like RDNA 2 would be getting FSR port or Redstone support. Uh, And they also said they wouldn't talk about like uh, future forward looking stuff um, based upon whether or not RDNA 2 would be getting shader model updates with the X12. That's that's fine. That's all future stuff. But uh, they did respond to our question whether or not uh, the cadence of delivery of drivers would be the same between RDNA 1, 2 family and RDNA 3 and 4 family. And they say game optimizations and support for all RDNA 1 or RDNA series 1 through 4 will roll out at the same time in both driver packages. Um, so that would presume in the future you would get every single time there is a RDNA 3 and 4 driver, there would be an RDNA 1 and 2 driver. Sadly, we didn't clarify the question maybe well enough to also ask, do you get the same optimizations for the games in those drivers? Or is it just like, uh, you know, like a 
stamp plate number on something that actually doesn't contain many optimizations at all. Um, we didn't ask that question, sadly. But uh, when I when I look at the original statement and the fact that they are still putting it into some sort of different branch, I don't see how it can't mean some sort of degradation of service over time in comparison to what you had in the past. Mm. Um, uh, there's there's a lot of reasons for that that I would say that, but basically, usually you would. I don't believe that there is a stable most optimized form for future games that already exists or something like that. And if you would want to bring optimizations, like the, the RDNA ISA is similar enough across generations um, that you you could roll out optimizations for all of them uh, for, for similar titles. Uh, and then putting into two branches where one is more stable, and that means less changed, I would presume, yes. than... than <laughs> then that means it's possibly, I still think this means they're not going to be doing some level of optimization they would do for RDNA 3 and 4 for RDNA 1 and 2. Well, that still reads that way to me, well, there, even though... Yeah, I agree. And there was that uh, video from uh, Timothy Lottis, who's, yeah. a, a, you know, he's worked for AMD. He's worked for NVIDIA. <laughs> yeah, he's done a he's lot. Done a lot. <laughs> I mean, you know, the work that he's done has been game-changing, literally, in, in many, many ways. And essentially, he was saying that even when there was a unified driver branch, there were optimizations made for RDNA uh, 3 and 4, uh, which could have been backported to RDNA 2, but they but they weren't, simply because he surmised there wasn't the uh, development resource available at AMD to make that sort of stuff happen. And, um, yeah, so that, that there is a lot going on here. But going back to your questions, Alex, um, that we had for AMD. I mean, they they seemingly have confirmed that we're going to be getting the uh, the, the day one optimizations across all branches, which is good. Um, you seemed okay with the fact they didn't want to talk about future um, plans, you know, specifically FSR four and uh, FSR Redstone. I have a bit of a problem with not committing to it because they've basically raised the possibility that RDNA two is not going to get those features. And at the same time, we know that FSR4 does work on RDNA2. It's not optimal, yeah. but it's an option that I think PC users with RDNA2 GPU users, um, uh, RDNA2 GPU owners should have. You know, if if it technically works, it, it should be supported, right? I think that's, right. and it, you know, there are gains, there are reasons that why you would want to do it. It can be slower or faster than um, XESS, for example, and the quality seems to be better. I'd say that that's a feature that an RDNA2 user should have. So for AMD to say, actually, you know, this is all future stuff. We're not talking about this now. OK, fair enough. But at the same time, it's the fact that they're doing this that has raised the question in the in the first place. And the fact that they're not answering the question now doesn't particularly mean well. good news, does it? Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. The, one of the reasons why I am reluctant to be so critical is because companies almost never talk about future products that they haven't fully announced yet in their full form. Um, that's the only reason why. But what you say regarding the other aspect does make a lot of sense to me. Um, in, in general, I think it's been Steve also talked about this in the in the confusion video <laughs> that uh, AMD has been less not as good as Nvidia or even Intel in maintaining driver support and updates over time for legacy products um and uh, I think this is just another showing of it uh, um and I think it is really weird to move RDNA 2 specifically. RDNA 1 is different enough in not supporting ray tracing and not supporting all of the DX12 ultimate feature set, not even supporting mesh shaders uh, fully, that I can kind of get why it would be deprecated. I, I also don't know if it's sold very well, unlike RDNA 2, which definitely sold a lot more products. Uh, there's also just so many fewer, there's so many fewer RDNA 1 products in general. Um, but right. RDNA 2, though, has so many products. I did think it was extremely force, um, uh, short-sighted to start wanting to talk about it openly of moving it to a a, a lesser branch. Uh, but I, think, I still think the fact in general that they are moving it to some sort of lesser separated branch, regardless, means it's going to get a different level of attention, whether it's, you know, 
desired or not from AMD's part, but they, they opened the box. Now we all have to deal with it. And I guess over time, we should probably look and see what this means for RDNA 2 um, in, yeah. in modern releases. If it starts to have greater degradation of performance and rasterization focused only titles or compute only focused titles over time versus RDNA 3, uh, that would be interesting to look at. Mm. Um, the thing that here's a, here's a sort of hypothetical scenario which has played out in the past. Um, a new AMD GPU comes out, and um, uh, obviously there's a price premium, as there are with all new GPUs. And often there's been the case that people are looking at the last generation of AMD GPU where there have been significant discounts, and uh, that certainly happened with um, RDNA three, where you, you know new products came out older RDNA 2 cards were discounted and they were still highly performant and people bought those instead. With this sort of uh, thing happening now, it's kind of like you've got to think twice about getting the more valuific GPU, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's really unfortunate, actually. Uh, I definitely remember a lot of people grabbing up 6800s and 6800 XTs because they were they had, they had like similar performance, even better performance in some cases yeah. versus their RDNA three comparisons, mm -hmm. uh, and maybe even more VRAM, right? Yeah, like that. Yeah, so poof. that's an interesting point, right? Because you know this is kind of like something how um, the stuff like this, you know, the separation of the drivers can actually have an impact on you know actual purchasing decisions, and uh, it makes you think twice about grabbing that older generation GPU if you kind of have this nagging doubt in the background that it's not going to be fully supported to the extent of its actual capabilities. Um, any final words on this, John, before we move on? Oh, I just wanted to come in and say that the 6800 XT was a really nice card that held out for a long time. So mm -hmm. uh, I think it was 2020 that that launched. Was yeah, it? yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was a that was a pretty good value. It was an interesting time. And I think it sold extremely well in the PC market. Um, and so, yeah, ensuring that it has enough support to continue, I think it's in their best interests. And we're at a weird spot. So just this whole conversation got me thinking about the long-term viability of PC graphics cards. Like in the past, things would change so dramatically that older graphics cards simply couldn't handle, literally couldn't run the instruction right. sets of new games, right? Like that's how it was. Uh, and yeah, we do have ray tracing and machine learning stuff rising up, but... Uh, we've also seen the proliferation of lower spec PC devices, all the handhelds becoming popular and such, which I think has kind of shifted things a little bit, making right. uh, older graphics cards more viable for a longer period of time than it yep. was in the past. And as a result, I think it's more important than ever that the companies support these products as long as they realistically can, even if they're not putting their top engineers on everything, just trying to ensure that you get a good good enough experience on hardware that can realistically run the types of games that are coming out like I, you know you don't yeah. expect every new game to run on like for instance you got doom the dark ages it requires ray tracing right but that's still as long as your card is reasonably like within the last seven years you could run it i mean actually i didn't test the 6800 xt with doom but i believe it runs okay yeah it should do right? i mean you know it should, it should like do. it's not amazing but it's like it's smooth enough to enjoy uh you get a good experience out of it and it looks good um so yeah i don't know man it's just but yeah it's just this this the handheld pc space these low power boxes this stuff really did change the pc market in a way that i think uh you know, changes the the uh, the path for upgrading to newer cards. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Final thoughts, Alex? Yeah, I just wish um, AMD would have more clear internal messaging <laughs> so that there isn't a flurry of uh, people getting. I mean, you should have read the AMD and Radeon Reddits on that weekend. It was it was it was a bloodbath there. So <laughs> uh, it would definitely be great if they had a more coherent internal messaging, as well as making sure their driver notes are right. Like the, the I did read about the USB-C power thing yes. on the cards, and mm -hmm. it's weird to even have something in a driver note that is not in the driver. Um, so yeah, not good. Yeah, not great at all. All I gotta say, Rich, to final thing is that 
How do you feel about your Radeon 7 purchase <laughs> in 2025? It's back there. Uh, that is actually the non-functional one because my Radeon 7 uh, stopped working. But amazingly, a DF supporter stepped in and sent me his one. And mm. uh, we talked about it on a direct a while back. And oh, um, yeah. I ran Alan Wake on it and it, it just didn't work at all. It was it was oh. it was just uh, something went very very wrong with that, and I think you know that kind of leads us back into deprecated driver support because at some point there's going to be issues cropping up, um, and will those issues ever be fixed? Right, you you kind of hope so based on the proliferation of um, RDNA two cards out there versus the Radeon seven, which probably sold like you know few thousand or whatever because it wasn't really designed to be. Uh, uh, sort of mainstream release, and it was superseded by RDNA one like a few months later. But yeah. you know that's the, that's the point, right? You know, um, if you're going to deprecate driver support um, and validation and stuff like that, then this sort of stuff does happen. And unfortunately, AMD has form on this because it deprecated Vega, and uh, you know they were still selling Vega iGPUs for God knows how long, and that's that's not great. So you know, meanwhile, Nvidia still has support going back to um, uh, the Turing 2018 cards, some of which are still really good to this day. You know, what can we say? It's, it's, it's not a particularly great situation for AMD. 